Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters in Yeshua. We're back for another scripture reading. Um, so today, I'm hoping to get through Genesis 7 through 8, and Matthew 6 through 7, maybe. I might just have time to do Matthew 6, but we'll see. Okay. Okay. Yahweh then said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. And Noah did all that Yahweh commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood waters came on the earth, and Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and unclean animals, of birds and all creatures, that move along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark, as Yah had commanded Noah, and after the seven days the flood waters came on the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, on the seventeenth day of the seventh, second month, on the day that all springs, sorry, all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the flood gates of the heavens were opened, and rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On that very day, Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, everything with wings. Pairs of all creatures that had the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals were going and the animals going in were male and female of every living thing. <coughs> As Yahweh commanded Noah, then Yahweh shut him in. For forty days the floods kept coming on the earth, and the wa sorry, and as the waters increased they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark flooded on the surface, I mean, sorry, floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 50, 15 cubits. Every living thing that moved on land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth, and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals, and the creatures that move along the ground, and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left, and those with him in the ark. The waters flooded the earth for a hundred and fifty days. Genesis 8. But Yahweh remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark, and he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens had been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth. At the end of the hundred and fifty days, the water had gone down. And on the seventeenth day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountain of Ararat. The waters continued to recede until the tenth month, and on the first day of the tenth month, on the tops of the mountain became visible. <coughs> After forty days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark, and sent out a raven, and it came and it kept flying back and forth until the waters the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could find nowhere to perch, because there was water over all the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. <coughs> he reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. 
He waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a flush of freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. By the first day of the first month of Noah's six hundredth and first year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the twenty-seventh day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then Yahweh said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground, so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out, together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground, and all the birds, everything that moves on land, came out of the ark one kind after another. <coughs> Sorry. Then Noah built an ark to Yahweh, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. Yahweh smelt the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as, as I have done. <coughs> as long as the earth endures, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Okay, Matthew 6. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. <coughs> Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. <coughs> and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. <coughs> And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. <coughs> this, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sins. <laughs> when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to what your sorry, only to your father who is unseen, and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. <laughs> Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if, if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? <laughs> You cannot, 
No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve, serve both Yah and money. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? <clears throat> and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all of his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that is how Yah clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Alright, brothers and sisters, this is the last chapter I have time for this time. Alright, Matthew 7. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye, and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? <coughs> you hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. <laughs> Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. <laughs> Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If, the, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. <clears throat> Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. <coughs> watch out for false, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are fierce, ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every tree that bears Every tree, good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus by their fruit you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew, and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Joshua had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he thought as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. 
All right, brothers and sisters, that's all for now. Shalom and bye.